coming up on Mountain News this morning. The booming coal industry may be losing its spark, but some continue to preserve the past. And the Hillbilly Days Festival begins today with a few new surprises. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Madison Carmouche. We are coming up on 5 a.m. on April 18th, Thursday. It is Thursday. Let's check in with meteorologist Tim Jawbridge for a look at your forecast this morning. It is Thursday, it is Friday Eve, and we got a tremendous day on tap. The organizers for Hillbilly Days in Pikeville should be happy with the forecast today. In the meantime, we get you ready to rock and roll into this 30, 60, this Thursday, that is, 61. <sighs> get the coffee going, right? Warm day ahead, it's something to look forward to, and maybe not so much the hot version of the coffee, the ice version this afternoon. Average high is 70, a shower and thunder shower threat heading through tonight. It looks a little bit better, a little less robust, and we trend colder into the weekend. Pretty much mid and upper 50s and lower 60s across eastern and southern Kentucky early on this Thursday morning. And yes, the satellite with a composite not completely picking up the detail of the cloud cover region wide, but drier air continues to move on in with high pressure, which means as we head through today, we average out to being partly cloudy and a forecast high and hazard this afternoon up to 83. More about the first alert seven day forecast into the weekend in just a few moments. Madison. All right, Tim, thank you. Much of Eastern Kentucky's history is intertwined with the history of coal. But as the industry dwindled, not only in our region, but across the nation, some have made it their duty to preserve the memories that were created through the boom of the coal industry. I sat down with a couple in Harlan County who is doing just that. U.S. Steel may have brought the city of Lynch to fruition, but the community is what keeps it alive today. At its peak, Lynch was home to more than 10,000 people, but now that number is less than 1,000. And the reason for that being is that U.S. Steel was shutting all the mines down, and if you were not employed by U.S. Steel, you couldn't live in this town, so you had to move elsewhere. And then the population de declined and dwindled and dwindled and dwindled. Those dwindling numbers ultimately led Lynch High School to graduate its final class of 21 seniors in 1981. There are a lot of people that would care very, very little about their school. And I think a lot of times those are the schools that graduate 600 seniors. They didn't have, they had a lot of other things we did not have but they didn't have what we have, the love and the closeness. That's not there. In 2013, Mary Jo and Michael Bradovich took matters into their own hands, keeping memories that lived within Lynch High School alive by creating the Bulldog Room. When the class reunion came around, we told them what we were doing, and that was just opening up a Christmas gift. And they pitched in, they donated money, that helped with trophy cases and I mean, mannequins, paint. paint on the floor is expensive, you know, and, and it, it, all of it costs a lot of money, and they've all pitched in and done that. And now the love, closeness, and memories live on through the belongings of students past. The people that graduated from Lynch, when they come in here, for example, if they look at this um, picture of a championship team, it brings back stories. And if there were 500 people at that championship game, there's 500 different stories. The stories of Lynch High School now live all over the world, but the Obradoviches say they will remain right here. No place like home. <laughs> <laughs> oh. If you are interested in a tour of the Bulldog Room, you can find more information in this story on our website. There will be no school in the Harlan Independent School System today. A social media post says this is due to an unexpected plumbing and water issue in the district. This will not be an NTI day. The Kentucky Community and Technical College System is recognizing students who enrolled in dual credit courses last fall. 
Nearly 27,500 Kentuckians from more than 350 high schools took more than 5,000 dual credit courses last fall. Together, they earned more than 142,000 credit hours, saving around $13 million in tuition cost. For local festival lovers, the wait is over. The Hillbilly Days Festival is expected to fill the streets of Pikeville. The 47th festival kicks off today, bringing community members to downtown Pikeville for food, fun, and fellowship with music, rides, booths, and more. Officials say it is a continuation of the fan favorite festival with a few new surprises. The three day event will benefit Shriners Hospital for Children, helping kids while bringing more than more people into Pike County. We're just really excited to welcome our visitors and our guests to the city of Pikeville. We know that the money raised goes to a wonderful cause with our Shriners and all of the wonderful work that they do to help our children. But it really is just about welcoming people to the city of Pikeville. And we know they come for Hibbley Days, but our goal is to make sure they come back. The carnival opened yesterday at 6 o'clock, but the official event starts today. While the carnival is open and vendors are now setting up for the Hillbilly Days Festival, first responders are hoping to continue pushing the importance of safety for this year's event. From being weather aware to being prepared, officers with the Pikeville Police Department say there are many ways to safely enjoy the downtown festival. Officers recommend keeping your phones charged for emergency use, taking photos of children before entering the large crowd in case they go missing, and staying hydrated for all of the walking and possible waiting, saying the department is also there if needed. The whole department will be out there in the days. Uh, several of us will be out on foot. We'll still have regular vehicle patrol um, in the neighborhoods and downtown area, but a lot of us will be on foot, so you'll have no trouble finding one of us. Officials say the event is meant to be fun and enjoyed responsibly. Thanks for getting your day started with us here on Mountain News this morning. When we return, there was a stunning testimony yesterday at a congressional hearing about the failings of Boeing. And we are set up weather-wise for a warm day across the Commonwealth today, but we're watching elements back out across the middle portion of the U.S. that may affect us tonight and tomorrow. Those details with your first alert seven day forecast all coming up right after this.